today conversing in this pleasant green summer garden, all so peaceful and lush looking, on Newcastle Hill. I think it is very appropriate to draw attention to the journal I am holding up, which is of course the August 97 edition of the Royal Geographic Society's magazine, Geographical, about the alarming future of the world's water supplies. Now, in many areas, water is being wasted from underwater beds, which are not being replenished. The underground waters that came in after the Ice Age are much more than the subsequent replacement from any artesian absorption beds. And as we draw too much of them, the supply is exhausted permanently in many places. And in some parts of Arabia, people are mining those aquifers to grow crops of wheat for profit when there will be no drinking water in 10 years' time. And the lady who wrote the article in this publication, which she entitled, The Making of a Water Crisis, she explains that within another 30 years, water will be far more scarce on this planet than oil will be. That people will be fighting wars for water so that they can not die of thirst, they can grow their crops. And even in Europe, I recall at a conference in Tübingen four years ago, in a rather dry summer, big posters everywhere of a sad looking wolf saying, uh, if you drink my water, I must die, because the wildlife of Europe is suffering much more from the total drying up of streams in dry years, like for example the Darrant and Kent in England, which is a common feature now whenever there's a dry season in Europe. In the east it is far worse. For example, the Aral Sea is two-thirds dried up because the Russian Soviet government had taken all the water to grow cotton crops in the valley of the Oxus and Jaxartes. People will be dying for want of water, not just in the tragic drought we see now in New Guinea, the, uh, the Philippines, Malaya, and Indonesia, but on a worldwide scale. And the proper respect for our water resources is a desperately important task. It is much more important, if we look at this, even at once, than worrying about this regrettable delay in the greenhouse emissions reduction. That is very serious and adds to our problem. But unless we look at fair water distribution and proper conservation, not the disastrous kind like the Egyptian high-rise dam, which led to erosion of the Nile Delta and all sorts of problems with the great reservoir now filling with silt. Now, water engineering, water politics, and a proper hydrologist's scientific concern for how best to clean and reuse water are going to be the keys to human survival by the middle of the first century of the next millennium. We do not have too much longer to wait. <laughs>